All right, we're back. So, hey, there, doorbell. You need to get that really quickly. All right, so that blue box represents my control volume. It represents the throttling valve. And for sure, I have energy coming in with mass and energy coming out with mass. Hey, any work? Well, no fans, no pumps, no turbine uh, blades, no shafts um, for compressors, etc. So there's no work. What about heat transfer? Well, you might think it would depend on whether the fluid going through there is warmer or cooler than the outside, and that thought's absolutely right. But another thing to note is that these throttling valves, as you see them, are usually really, really short. So the fluid does not spend that much time inside the valve and therefore cannot pick up that much heat. So no heat transfer. So in theory, in, of all the devices that we've done, compressor, turbine, pipe, uh, some of you who did homework uh, number eight, part one, the previous vid video did diffusers and nozzles. This is the easiest one. There's just M.E1 in and M.E2 out, okay? How is that gonna actually simplify? Well, I'll write it all out quickly for you. You can see that M.E1 and M.E2 are, are equal, and so the M dots are gonna cancel. So really, if we had a throttling valve equation, it would be E1 equals E2, but writing that out for you, Okay, it would look like that. Enthalpy plus kinetic plus potential equals enthalpy plus kinetic plus potential. And then what we always try to do is say, hey, is anything, are any of those changes insignificant? Well, for sure, we can eliminate the potential terms. Those throttling valves are either horizontal or they're very short, so there's very little in, uh, dif difference in potential energy. It's always true. Okay, how about the kinetic energy terms? Well, it turns out that the if uh, for some fluids it can speed up or slow down as it goes through, but you'll notice that it's not like a nozzle or a diffuser where we have a big change in inlet area and outlet area. And many times these are these throttling valves are made with the inlet and outlet area so that there's very little change in velocity. So we can eliminate that. Okay. Now it's not true that these are absolutely equal. They're close. But what we can say is that they're close enough that we can say, hey. inlet enthalpy and the outlet enthalpy are equal. That is your throttling valve equation. So of all the equations we've come up with, uh, I'm working in chapter five with steady flow devices, it's the simplest one. All right, so enthalpy in equals enthalpy out. And it turns out that's useful for problem solving and also for understanding what's going on in the refrigeration system. So let me get an example up there really quickly. We'll have a throttling valve and I'll give you some conditions on it. And uh, see if you can work through it using table A12E. So make sure you got table A12E. All right, so we're gonna have a throttling valve. I'm gonna draw it a little bit differently. Thanks for your patience. So here's the inlet conditions. We've got pretty high pressure, okay? And we got what kind of state coming in? A saturated liquid. <coughs> That's what I said earlier. If you can somehow, say, have a tank with R134A at pretty high pressure and a saturated liquid, and then you put it through a throttling valve, it's gonna work. You're gonna get something over here that can then go into your refrigerator and can cool things off. Great. All right, outlet conditions. Well. Throttling valve. By the way, notice that I drew it a different way. This is a restriction, so it's the same idea. We have a restriction so that when the refrigerant goes through, it loses pressure. And we're going to do an outlet pressure in this case of 35 PSIA. Okay, so what I want you guys to work on is two things. I want us to get the refrigerant delta T as it goes through there, and I would like us to get, in addition, the quality at the outlet. So I'm going to call this one and I'm going to call this two. All right, so maybe shut off the video and take a look at table A12E. Always, you know, one, two things that you should be doing when we're doing these steady flow devices is saying, hey, is there any other information we can get about the inlet state or the outlet state that is relevant? 
and um, then we can we, could we apply the first law so I would look at the inlet state you need Delta T so could you get the temperature at this inlet state so I'll be getting that up there go for it So hey, that's part of the work. I got that the temperature at the inlet is about 90.5 degrees, about 90.5 degrees. So I need the temperature at the outlet and something that'll allow me to do the quality at the outlet. So hopefully you take, can look at your, can think about using the tables. That's what we're gonna use the tables at two. And remember that in any, almost all cases, if we can find two properties for a fluid, we can uh, go to the tables and find out other properties we need. So. Is there another property we know at this outlet? Okay, is there a property we know at this outlet? Well, that comes from the first law. So the first law for a steady state throttling valve is just basically that H2 is approximately equal to H1. So we could get H2 by if we knew H1. And do we have enough information for getting H1? Absolutely. We know where it is on the table, 120 PSI, X, X equals 0.0. .0. So that would be the HG value. So I'll write that down. H, H1 is equal to HG. And going to my 120 PSI lane. Pardon me. The HF value. Goodness, my mistake. HF value. Let me correct that. 41.79. Okay. So there's the H1 value, which is 41.79. <clears throat> and then that allows us to get H2. And I'm just going to write the H2 over on the right side so we can think about the information that we got. All right, then you're back to reading the tables. I got some R134A, it's 35 PSI. It's um, enthalpy value is 41.8 about, hey, what is it? So go over to A12 and look at 35 PSIA. The HF value is 19, about 19.3. The HG value is 106.37. So the given value, our H2 value, is in between the HF and HG value. So that means over here we have a saturated mixture. So we got a pretty good description of the inlet and the outlet. We know that it comes in hot, comes in high pressure, goes through the throttling valve, loses pressure, comes out at a lower pressure, but has the same enthalpy. There's nothing that really robs energy from it as it goes through, and nothing that really gives it energy from it as it goes through. All right, so hey, let's go back to our questions. What's the delta T? Well, we need the temperature at the outlet. If it's saturated, the temperature has to be T sat. So back to A12E. MIA12E says that the temperature at this outlet is about 22.6 degrees. So T2 is about 22.6 degrees, 22.57 to be precise. So now that, my friends, is something pretty challenging to get your mind around. I could take some 90.5 degree stuff and then just put it through a restriction and all of a sudden it drops by a tremendous amount. It's really cold. It's pretty amazing when you actually work with these systems. You can actually feel this pipe here sometimes and it's pretty warm to the touch. And then over here on this other side, you actually sometimes have frost occurring on it. It really drops in temperature. And you can actually look at that inside your refrigerator. We might take a look at that a little bit later on in the semester. In short, what's going on is as we go through, we have a saturated liquid, we lower the pressure, and saturated means about to evaporate as we lower the pressure the, we get some of the refrigerant evaporating, okay? Some of the refrigerator evaporating, and that takes energy. So if that refrigerator is, if that refrigerant's evaporating, that ref energy actually comes from the refrigerant itself, and its temperature ends up lowering. Pretty interesting thing to think about. Regardless, the numbers say that it comes out really cold, and that is the fact, that is a fact. All right, so let's finish it off really quick. We wanna get our delta T, which would be T2 minus T1, and you can crank through that yourself. 
I'll do that really quickly. T2 minus T1, 22.6 minus, uh, minus is the final, and 19.5 is the inlet. If we just uh, round it off a little bit, um, that's going to be what, a 60, just about a 68 degree temperature drop. 68 degrees temperature drop. Yeah, 68 degrees. So where, you know, where in the world are you gonna get a 68 degree temperature drop in a matter of, a lot of times this length is like an inch, something drops in an inch. It's just an amazing fact that people figured out that sometimes if you take, if you put it, if you put a fluid in a situation where it can evaporate with a with pressure drop, it cools incredibly. All right, last thing is to get the quality at the outlet. Well, we have H2, and we know our equation for a quality. I'm going to remind you of a mixture. So H of a mixture is equal to HF plus X times HFG. And so we can solve for X. The quality okay, is equal to are H2 minus HF all over HFG, okay? H2 is the same as H1, so that's that 41.79. And give me a second to go to the tables. Uh, HF, 19.274. And the HFG value is 87.093, 87.093. Okay, all those are BTUs per pound mass, so the quality is going to come out as unitless. Um, and if you'd bear me with me for just a second, uh, let's see, um, we'll just estimate it really quickly. So 41 minus 19, that's going to be about 22, about 87. It's going to be about point in point two something and you can finish that off yourself. All right, good. So that's the last topic for um, flow through devices. There are others that we didn't do in chapter five and you can read about them. Hopefully you have a better feel for what's going on. And in addition, this would be a good thing to keep in mind if you um, go on and work with cooling systems. Uh, with throttling valves in general, we get a pressure drop. And in particular, if we can send a, a fluid that is a saturated liquid into a throttling valve, a little bit evaporates and we get a huge pressure drop, probably a huge temperature drop, and we actually have some really, really, we can have some very, very cool fluid that can go and do cooling for us in an evaporator. All right, that's it. Um, you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving. Uh, please feel free to email me if you have any questions, and we will see you on Monday. Take care.